Hey, I'm going to be answering seven things you are too afraid to ask autistic people. All that's coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have autism, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia, and I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you're new around here and you'd like to learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button by clicking the notification bell. And if you're watching over on Facebook, be sure to give this page a like and a follow to see more videos just like this one. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. What is going on? Where we think differently daily. Welcome back, different thinkers. Hope you're all thinking differently and being awesome and stuff like that. I wanted to do this video because I was like, Dang, there's like, there's so many questions that I feel like people would like to know, but they're too afraid to ask because they don't want to like offend someone on the spectrum. They don't want to come across as being like weird or something. I don't know. So anyway, if you want to add to this and ask me other questions, please do so on my Twitter and Instagram. You guys can follow me over there. Um, and the links are down, down there below. It's just at the Aspie world. If you want to follow me on those channels as well. And I read every single DM and I love it. But if you want to add real time to this conversation and have a laugh at me, put a comment in the comment section below and read and respond to every single one so it's never wasted let's get on with this video this video is sponsored by sensory autism headphone therapy sensory programs help children and adults on the autism spectrum with sensory processing disorder and special educational needs a company that's recommended by therapists and professionals globally sensory is a multi-century music uh, movement program the sensory headphones are equipped with dynamic filters and bone conduction technology that helps improve motor skills and cognitive development in children and adults so kind of like you put these on and then you like like go through the list of programs and you take their like actual like so many days or so many weeks program which you do every day and then it tells you to do different stretches while listening to different music i've tried this thing for like um you know however long i did if i think i did it for like a week and it was absolutely amazing this thing actually really was fascinating which is why i wanted to work with them again i did a video with them before but i wanted to do another one and these guys kindly sponsored this video and i love it so the sensory works on the fine gross and visual motor skills in children leading to enhancements in handwriting and drawing balance and posture um, and eye hand coordination and sport like skills now sensory is designed to be safe and effective and is helping children on the Austin spectrum with auditory sensory processing disorder and other developmental delays now if you guys want to get your hands on one of these units i will leave a link down below with a uh, a code so you can actually get 10 percent off with the link if you want to purchase this from me down below so I just want to talk about the program. So the program consists of a specially designed music process with neuroacoustic modifications, as well as a series of movement based exercises. It's a 40 day program divided into two sections of 20 days each with a break of one month in between. Each day consists of 30 minutes of music and exercise. Soundtree helps improve fine gross motor skills in children and things like handwriting and balance and, and posture and hand-eye coordination, which is super, super awesome. You get nine hours of battery time in these headphones when they're fully charged and you also get access to the online exercise videos um, with an option to switch to Bluetooth mode as a regular headset you know you can use these things as your daily kind of listeners which is pretty cool because they're just super snazzy super cool and so you can actually use them as your Bluetooth headset for your phone and you can also discreetly do your program so that's super awesome please check them out like I said link in the description below you get 10% off with this and I highly recommend it okay guys so I basically went ahead and I listed out seven Seven things which I think that are, are most uh, interesting that people who are not autistic want to ask autistic people because I, I just get all these kind of DMs like, hey Dan, you know, I didn't know autistic people did this, or hey, I've never thought to ask this, or blah blah blah, you know, and you know, are you all like rain mounted? <laughs> so I basically um, went through every single thing that I could think of, uh, and then I made seven of like the most compelling ones, and we're gonna get into those right now because uh, yeah, it's just gonna be so much fun. Okay, so the first question that people are too afraid to ask and i'm going to answer them in real time for you guys because like i'm just that dope <laughs> you guys are awesome thank you so much for watching okay so the first question is why don't you look people in the eyes right and this is a really interesting question a lot of people on the autism spectrum you might notice don't look somebody in the eyes why why is the reason well i'll tell you what it isn't it's not ignorant it's not being negative it's not being um rude it's literally just the fact that 
looking someone in the eyes for someone on the autism spectrum is like so intimate and it's such a weird connection that it's almost like reaching into someone and feeling their soul it's such a it's such a a sharp connection that it's, it's so intense that everything in your mind and body starts to shake when you make eye contact with somebody and that's so intense that it could cause like meltdowns or shutdowns or burnouts or any kind of like attack and anxiety attack because it's so intense it's quite an intense experience so for that reason uh, me personally this is why I don't make eye contact that much um, and I do try but it's you know it's difficult it's an, look it's an ongoing thing it's a working progress practice makes progress but I can't promise anything okay so number two is why do autistic people obsess over things well it's very interesting really because you know, autistic people have this trait where they become very, very obsessed with things. Now, if you're watching, you know, mum, dad, girlfriends, or parents, partners, whatever, if you're watching this video and your partner, friend, loved one, child, whatever, has an autism spectrum disorder, you will know exactly what I mean, where they obsess over something so much so that they know every single thing about that thing to the point where they can't get enough of it. They'll read everything about it, they'll have all the merchandise, they'll even go to the place if it's like a, an actual thing. Uh, and it's just a, an obsession, an obsession that they could talk to you for hours about, and I'm pretty sure they do. So if you understand what I'm talking about, give this video a thumbs up by clicking that thumbs up button down below. So we're, we're on the same page here. We're like, we're like vibing right now because you guys know exactly what I'm saying. So because of that, uh, these obsessions um, are like, um, are almost like a fixation, um, uh, 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 an obsession, like an obsessive interest. Now, the reason this does happen to people in the autism spectrum is because the way the autism brain is wired, we see things on a deeper level that somebody may not see. So, whereas somebody can have a really deep conversation with someone um, on a neurotypical level, an autistic person could really understand the complex nature of grasshoppers or the complex nature of carpets and the way the carpets are made and it could be absolutely anything right the manufacturing of aluminium like it could be anything but what I'm trying to say is that the reason they do that and the reason they get fixated on those things is because there's there's a level of understanding there's a deeper connection there's a there's there's things that people don't really see and there's, there's you know everything in nature everything in reality has a complex beauty that is so vast that we rarely pay attention to these things but people on the autism on spectrum have this intuition to dive deep into things that they align themselves with and see that beauty and see that complex nature then to unravel it and see it in its glory and because of that because you have things of huge complex nature you're then able to categorize them and segregate them off into factions kind of like why I really like Pokemon because you know there's, there's like 101 Pokemon in the original Pokedex and you can line them all up and they'll have names and all the things that they do it's having a category for complex beauty I think that kind of sums it up pretty well. Okay, so number three is what does the world look like to you, being like an autistic person? I guess the world as I see it has always been the way I see it, but I guess people who are not uh, on the autism spectrum would see the world a little bit differently than I do. If I try to explain what I see, uh, the best way I can explain it is that it's it's very bright and colorful. It's also noisy and very smelly. The world smells, everything has a, 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 an intense smell. People have an intense smell. People's houses have an intense smell. And those smells are, are, are closely linked to the person and like places have smells. Like I went to San Francisco and New York and they all have individual smells. And I know where I'm because of the smell of places. And I've always been obsessed with smell. So things are smelly. Um, and, but the other thing is that things are very bright and colorful and chaotic. Everything's moving really fast and, and there's bright lights everywhere. And people are running over you and they're like shouting and you don't know what this person's saying and I just need time to relax. That's kind of like what it feels like. And that's what the world looks like. It's all, it's like, it's like everybody's on a train and the train's going a thousand miles an hour, but, you're, you're, but the windows are open on the train. Like imagine that, that's what it feels like. Okay, the all important question. Number four, can autistic people have sex? Of course, autistic people can have sex. And actually, um, yeah, autistic people, um, you know, are, are no different to anybody else in that respect. You know, there's no um, issues in stopping one in involving themselves with intercourse with, uh, with a person of mutual consent. And I think, like, uh, that's something that's also missed because a lot of people think that autistic people 
you know, won't have sexual relationships. And I think that's completely bogus. And I think it's good and healthy to talk about it. And if you're a little bit younger and you're watching this video, you'll learn about it later on. But in terms of people who are um, on the autism spectrum and of the age of consent, um, I, yeah, I think that, that pretty much everybody on the autism spectrum has the ability and wants to have sex. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And it's healthy. Okay, so number five, can autistic people drive? Now, this is an interesting question. Now, I drive a car um, and I passed in a manual car, uh, but, I, but I also um, prefer to buy automatic cars, but I feel like the, the less things you can take out of, of distraction in the car, the safer the environment, and I just prefer automatic cars for that reason. But the interesting thing is that a lot of the autistic community that I know of do actually drive cars. Um, and I feel like the only way I believe autistic people won't be able to drive cars is if they have, um, you know, more higher support needs um, where, you know, they have some intellectual disability or they have some physical disability or, you know, th there may be some reason that would stop them actually participating in taking a safe driving test. So. Uh, in short, yes, but some people may not be able to drive. Okay, so number six, can autistic people fall in love? Oh my goodness, I hear this all the time. And uh, are autistic people capable of love? And do they understand emotions? Because emotions are quite a difficult and complex thing. Look, autistic people can fall in love. There's nothing wrong with that. How they express emotion, how they express love, may be a little bit different to that what you normally typically see in a neurotypical person. But that doesn't mean that they're incapable of love. And actually it means that they're probably more capable of love than you could ever imagine because they see it on a deeper, complex, more intuitive level. And that is amazing. So just give people a chance. So if you're wondering with these questions yourself and you maybe looking at getting a relationship with somebody who is on the autism spectrum, well then just give it a try. Find out, like speak, talk, communicate. It's all about talking. Okay, so number seven, one of my pet peeves, if you will, when people ask me this question, but this one is an interesting one. How come you don't look autistic, right? And I get it all the time. People, oh, you would never know that, that you were autistic. I'm like, what, am I supposed to have like a tattoo on my diagnosis? Like, I'm autistic, please, you know, treat me differently. Or, I was, I'm supposed to have a t-shirt with a big sign saying, autistic person, look at me, I'm autistic. Oh, I, I, I don't understand the, 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 the weird reason people are fascinated by the look of something. Now, um, I can understand if I said, I've got a huge broken leg and my ankle is snapped in four places and they look at me and there's no cast. I'm not in a wheelchair, I'm not on crutches and I'm running a marathon. Then I can understand if they say, hey, you don't look like you've broken your leg in three places, but there is no look for autism, apart from looking dapper fine and super dope. Because yeah, there is like no physical attributes to being diagnosed with autism. None that I know of, none that I've ever come across. And so there's no way to look autistic. It's, it's not something that you can, that you look like put it that way. If you have anything to add, put it in a comment down below. Share this video if you think it can brighten somebody's day. And if you are new, please subscribe and I'll see you next time guys. Peace.